Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and to episode 3 of my new series on whether med school is the right place for you. If I'm bouncing around a little bit it's because I'm actually lying on a trampoline in the middle of the front yard because one of my viewers said that the last two videos the background was exactly the same so I thought I'd change it up a bit and I said yeah just lie upside down. I might get a little bit of vertigo or something because I get a little bit motion sick and I feel myself already bobbing up and down. But anyway, in this episode I'm going to talk about something different because in the last one we spoke about being a teenager and making the actual decision of wanting to apply for med school, getting enough marks in the HSC or whatever you're doing to get into school and now I'm assuming that we've got the marks, we've been accepted, what's next? I must admit that once I got into medical school, my greatest concern over the summer holidays, which was three months because you start later in med school than you do in the other uni courses, especially in the first couple of years, is that I had to learn rapidly how to drive. As a relatively young person, when I did my year 12 HSC, I only had two or three months to learn how to drive a car because the university that I went to was approximately 20 kilometers from my parents' home. I'd have to drive there five days a week in rush hour and we only had a manual car so it took a little bit of time, took a lot of effort, perseverance and stress. A lot of time practicing how to change gears in an empty car park on a Sunday because back then malls were shut on Sundays and we just used car parks as practice places to learn how to drive. But I managed to get my license and in the six years of medical school I only got fined for parking illegally once. But in terms of what it's like to actually go to med school, the first thing you need to remember is that to get into medical school you were probably one of the top say three or four, if not one or two, students in your high school. So you've got really good marks and you've always been a standout student, you may even have been the ducks of your school. But now that you're in medical school you've got to remember that almost everybody who's made it into med school were also ducks of their school. So no longer are you competing on a level where there's a huge range of academic excellence? Everybody's smart, everybody's got the academic ability and the intelligence to attend med school and it becomes much harder to, to stand out in that way. In addition to that, going to uni, it's much harder to get full marks than it was in high school. In the first year or two there's a lot of basic sciences and not so much clinical so you spend a lot of your time in textbooks memorizing stuff basically to do with biochemistry, biology, anatomy, physiology and all these stuff where a lot of it's rote learning. A lot of the stuff doesn't make much sense but you just got to know it. I mean, imagine if you've never seen a patient before how hard it is to work out the path I don't know of the ulnar nerve through your forearm. Basically even stuff like for anatomy you need to know the muscles and nerves, the blood vessels and bones and stuff and you need to know where nerves go under muscles and how they go between arteries and which and all this kind of stuff and it's really hard to have a concept even with the cadavers that you have to play with which stink by the way because of all the formula it's really hard just to fully visualize what it's like and as I said basically it's a matter of just rote learning stuff and if you're good at that you're going to do really well in the first couple of years of med school. Many med students are dis disappointed by the fact that in the first couple of years you will have almost nil or actually zero contact with patients. Most of the time is spent in university in lecture halls listening to stuff that would probably bore most people to death Half the time you sit so far back that you can't see what is written and most of the time you can't hear what they've said. So it's kind of one of those things where you have to do a lot of study on your own. It's no longer like high school where they tell you what you need to know. They just, in university they just give you a broad kind of overview and it's up to you to do the relevant study at home. And unless you've got good motivation for that, it can be also a very difficult aspect of going to med school. So if you're finally able to survive the first years of basic science, you will then be gradually introduced to the world of clinical practice and that's by way of attending lectures, tutorials with actual doctors who practice and then gradually being allowed to go into hospitals and attend clinical placements in various specialties. 
tutorials have always been something which has been much of a love-hate relationship because that's the first time you ever actually start learning anything practical. But the difficulty with tutorials is that unlike lectures where you're sitting in a big hall where it's all passive and you're sitting there listening to somebody talk for an hour and then you go home or go to the next lecture. In the tutorials usually what happens is one is there are smaller groups so it's usually anything from five to twenty usually. They normally sit you around a circle and invariably they ask you questions. Now if you're someone who's very shy and most people in first and second year medical school tend to be. It's a very difficult thing to be continually grilled with questions where most of the time and most likely you won't know the answer. It can almost get to the stage where you dread going to these tutorials because you know that you're going to get picked on. And we've had doctors in the past, tutors who basically just go around the circle and they say like name a cause of chest pain and they go around and you're praying that you're number one because by the time you get to like number six, number seven, number eight, everyone's taken up all the answers and you're just sitting there stressing out and it's like one of the worst things that you have to experience when you attend these tutorials. If you're lucky and you get something right, the tutor might throw you a piece of chocolate or something, but usually the smart ones answer all the questions and just make you look dumb. And that's what happened most of the time when I was there. And by probably third year, you, as I said, you get introduced into the world of clinical work so there's usually one or two of you placed on each ward of the hospital one of the things that used to excite us because back then mobile phones wasn't a common item that we that people owned and the pager was the way we could socialize so everyone got really excited as a student to get a pager because the pages are usually not anything to do with seeing patients but it's usually to do with let's meet for lunch or what are you doing this afternoon kind of pages but then most of us will realize and tell you that once we become actual doctors, the pages are the worst thing you can have. It's actually the bane of your existence because every time it goes off, it means somebody wants you for something. So once every six to eight weeks or so, apart from the uni lectures, you go on a clinical placement. And this placement, as I said, can be any specialty in any hospital that's in your kind of network and you have no idea who you're going to get. So you might get really good terms where you get something really interesting, it's really hands-on, you get staff who actually like teaching medical students, you have senior doctors who actually like to talk to medical students and they show you stuff, and then on the other hand you may get really dodgy, crappy rotations where you end up with people who won't talk to you, they never show you anything and you're just sitting there wondering, well what am I going to do now because I'm not really allowed to do anything. The thing about medical school and medical students is that even when you're doing clinicals in the hospital, you're really not able to do much. Even though by the time you get into final year, you're considered what they say are sub-interns, which means you should be acting at a level of an intern, you never really get to do anything. You don't really get to do... I mean, sometimes you get to take blood or learn how to take blood, but you don't really get to do any other procedures. And all you basically do is walk around, one, maybe clerking patients, and two, is hopefully seeing some patients with some interesting histories and clinical signs. The thing about being medical students compared to where any other student who's in a hospital is that medical students are completely useless. As a physio student you get to actually do some patient contact, you get to walk patients and treat them. As student nurses you get to do vital signs and do other nursing stuff. But as medical students you're basically in the way. You don't really get to manage anything, you don't know anything. They might ask you to take a history, which for me now would probably take about two minutes, but for a medical student it will take about an hour. Patients are sick of seeing you, patients know you're a student, patients know that you can't help them, and patients get sick of having 20 medical students asking them the same question over and over again and wanting to listen to their murmur. And speaking of clinical science is that unfortunately the world of medical school, as I said, is very, very competitive. It's almost like a piranha to a feast when someone on the ward has something that's interesting. So for example, you get a patient who has that golden, it's almost like a golden ushi, like you know recently with Woolies with that, that Lion King where you can get the golden whatever, it's like a golden ticket where somebody has something clinical which is so interesting that everybody wants to see, including all the advanced trainees, the registrars and everybody. And these things are like stuff like mitral stenosis, murmurs, things that are relatively uncommon. 
And the nature of med school is that it's so competitive. Some med students will actually go out of their way to hide these patients from others so that you don't get to see them. It happens because people are competitive. People want to have the edge and people want to know stuff that you don't know. And the thing is, if you're not particularly proactive as a student like I was, by the time you hear about stuff, 28 different medical students have already been, and you get to the page and they're sick of it and they say no, and you don't get to hear them out. This has happened to me on so many occasions that I've pretty much gave up counting. There's been medical students who stay till 9 o'clock at night seeing patients on the ward, the people who turn up at 6 to examine patients before they have to go off the theatre because they have signs which disappear once they've been operated on. I never did any of that stuff. I preferred just to hang out and chill and be with friends and stuff like that. And one thing about medical school is that it's not like what you see in the movies. So it's not all about frat parties, drinking beer, saving lives and having a great time. It's a lot of hard work. There's heaps of stuff you've got to read, there's heaps of stuff you've got to study, there's exams, there's written tests, there's clinical like history and examination, there's vivas, oskies, whatever you like to call it, short cases, long cases, and all of them are really, really stressful and are really, really difficult. The thing is with the cases is not everybody, everyone gets a different case and it's a matter of trying to figure out what's wrong with the patient. And sometimes I've had times where I've actually been asked to examine a patient and present it and I've actually not managed to find anything wrong with them. But I still managed to get through. Maybe sometimes they want to trick you and say, listen to this person's heart, tell me what murmurs you hear. And you actually don't hear a murmur. I've had that happen and as long as you go through the motions, as long as you show them you know what you're doing, you're still fine and you still pass. Like I know I'm talking like uni is really stressful, and it is, and everyone knows that whether you're studying medicine or law or architecture or engineering or finance or nursing or whatever, uni at times can be very stressful because there's a lot of work and sometimes you feel overwhelmed. Med school just accentuates that by a million times because the work is actually so much more in depth, so much more difficult. And as I said, everyone who gets into med school tend to be really smart and you feel like, you just feel like a fish out of water basically a lot of the time. Now don't get me wrong, med school can be fun. There's a lot of camaraderie, you meet a lot of people, you get to hang out with a lot of cool colleagues and uni friends and you more than likely will make lifelong friends and even if you don't see them for a long time after you graduate from med school they still kind of your friends and you end up bumping into them sometime down the road because you need a specialty consult and they happen to be like the urologist on call or something and that's how you get reacquainted with them so there's a lot of good stuff about med school there's also the elective term where you get to go experience something that you may otherwise not get the opportunity to some people take the advantage of going to the third world and doing a lot of volunteer work in medicine, Sun Frontier and all that kind of stuff. You can basically do anything. You can go and be a doctor in Disneyland. I would have done that if I had the opportunity, but you know, you get to experience a lot of stuff. You get to grow up real fast when you're a medical student because you've suddenly gone from being a teenager, you suddenly become 18 and all of a sudden after that you've got the lives of other people in your hands so that's what happens when you do medicine as I said you grow up real fast things get real real quick and medical school does it prepare you for your first day as internship I personally think that it doesn't all the stuff you learn in med school well at least what I learned in med school a lot of it was rote learning a lot of it was just trying to memorize stuff that was in a textbook trying to find cheat ways cheat codes basically of how to remember all this stuff by using like mnemonics and anagrams and anything you can possibly think of to to just be able to retain hundreds and thousands of facts that apparently you're supposed to know as a doctor most of that stuff as soon as i finished the exam i forgot and the stuff I needed to know, I didn't. And it's like those things like medical school is kind of incomplete. I know that you hang around and you're supposed to learn stuff by osmosis. And, you know, the longer you, it's, the more you see stuff. Have you heard of the expression, you see one, do one, teach one. But you don't remember this stuff. I can even remember on the first day, it's stuff like you get a blood test back and the patient's hypokalemic. You know you need to replace their potassium, but you never learn what 
how do you do that? Do you give it orally? Do you give it intravenously? What's the dose? How much do you give it's, if it's 3.2? How much do you give if it's 3.8? You just have no clue and you kind of learn on the spot. And on the job, I find, most of the time. Med school requires you to have very little guilt. As I said earlier, you've got to harass patients. You've got to be in places where you feel like you don't really belong and you're not really contributing, but you're just there. If you don't, if you stay passive and you, you, if you're introverted, you're not really going to learn or get as much out of it as someone who's able to like just be out there, just be pushy basically to get the experience, to get the ability to see stuff. And sadly, I wasn't one of those. So I feel like for me, I didn't learn that much in med school. And that's why I found the first couple of weeks of internship really difficult. So thank you for tuning in once again. I hope you've enjoyed this video and look out for episode four, which will be coming up soon. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell for notifications. And I would really appreciate it if you have any comments or if you would just like to share your experience of what it's been like for you to go to medical school or if you have any questions that you may want to ask which I can address in a future episode and until then I'll see you later